Hi, Brandy here. Today we're talking about Dabrowski's imaginational overexcitability, and this is one that I can speak to quite well. I had an imaginary friend, Marky, growing up, and I think others here may have children that have that type of companion as well. It could be a buddy that is a stuffy that they're very close to. It could be an imaginary friend or a world that they've created all on their own. And it could be something that just takes them away so they're not even part of the world that we're in or our reality, but it's their own reality. I remember when my son was three years old, we just had painted his room and he was quite quiet during feet off the floor time. We didn't call it nap time. We called it feet off the floor time. And I was wondering what was going on. I walked in and I said, what did you do? And there was this perfect little circle in our newly painted wall. And he said, mom, the dolphins are on the other side and they wanted to get out. And he'd taken a screwdriver and he'd made this perfect little hole. And in his world, those dolphins were real and he was releasing them out into the world. Today, we're gonna to talk about Dabrowski's imaginational excitability and how we as parents can help our kids cope. Are you raising a child who lives in their own little world with imaginary friends, dragons, or some other make believe creatures? They may have invented a secret language they use when speaking with these friends, and you might not even have a clue what's going on in this world. Chances are you may be one of many parents who are raising what Dabrowski calls a child with an imaginational overexcitability. These children have heightened sensitivities in their ability to imagine and create, and often have rich inner lives that are vastly different from the children around them. Living with a creative child is an amazing experience, but it can also be challenging for parents who may not understand what's going on inside their child's head. If your child has an imaginational overexcitability, you might see some of the following behaviors. Your child may have a highly active imagination and be constantly creating new stories, worlds, and expressing themselves through imaginative play. Parents can nurture this rich, vivid, and active imagination in a variety of ways. Reading to them often and exposing them to a variety of art forms will open their minds to ideas that are exciting and engaging to them. To them, everything is possible, and they love science fiction and fantasy stories. If they've exhausted the Harry Potter and Dragon Wing series, introduce them to the local children's librarian. She would be happy to find them a new series. It might be a series that you read as a child or something that's upcoming and exciting in their world. Encourage them to write their own poetry and tell stories around the campfire. My go-to for anything literacy is Susanna Richards, and you can find her on Instagram at Sussing Out Books. She has the latest and greatest offerings for gifted readers. Parents, check out the book Some of My Best Friends Are Books, Guiding the Gifted Reader by Judith Halstead for more book ideas. At the end of the book, there's there's a bibliography section which leads you to other books that depict characters with common social and emotional issues that gifted kids face. Please note the book is older, so some of the titles within the book might be dated, but the issues are still very relevant. Now back to the traits. These kids are intensely creative, often producing innovative ideas or solutions that others don't think of. Parents can help them to think outside the box by nurturing their creativity and asking them questions that help them to hone this skill. One strategy I like to use is called the five whys. An example of the five whys would be to ask the child why they think the sky is blue. Once they give their answer, ask another question, getting them to think deeper about that answer, and then continue to ask why and then they, until they get to the heart of the why behind the question that was asked. This gets them to think about their thinking and hone their creative and critical thinking skills. Another characteristic you might see is they might have imaginary friends and even a secret language that they use with all of them. This is common in children with imaginational overexcitability and shouldn't be discouraged. In fact, it's a fantastic way to see what's going on in their inner world. Parents, play with your kids. Gifted kids love time with adults, and this will be an excellent opportunity for you to step inside their world. On the flip side, they love spending time alone in their own world, and they might get lost in their thoughts for long periods of time. It's important for parents to allow them this time to think. Don't rush them through the process. They're just little ones. Allow them to dream, participate in their imaginative play, and describe their dreams and aspirations. Oftentimes, they'll use very rich language to do this. 
Another characteristic is they're emotionally intense and might have strong aversion to being bored. Parents and teachers can help by providing them with opportunities to create and use their imagination. Act out things in the classroom and at home when you're learning about new subject matter. Encourage them to make up their own plays, puppet shows, or any type of dramatization to show what it is they know and what they're learning. Let's say you're learning about the Underground Railroad. I know a homeschooling mom with four kids who encouraged them to act it out. They slipped out of their bedroom window at night and headed to meet with others, another homeschooling family down the road, to meet up at the Underground Railroad. Encourage this level of imagination. This is what makes learning come alive. Another thing you might notice is these kids are more sensitive to their environment. They appreciate dramatic music, rich colors, and often surround themselves with tools to create. This might include costumes, puppets, art supplies, building materials, and anything else that gets their creativity flowing. When my boys were little, I used to have an imagination station. It was a box that I filled with all of these things. They could pull that box out whenever they wanted. They could build things, they could create, they could act things out. It just helped their imagination to soar. You can also encourage your child to use their imagination in everyday tasks, such as pretending to be the character of a book or to come up with a new way to play with their toys. The opportunities are endless. Give your children opportunities to go outside and give them opportunities for independent exploration. This includes setting them loose in a park or a nature area where they can explore without restriction. Creativity is a wonderful skill to have and to have a creative little child is a joy. And it's interesting when you have the opportunity to step into their world, see their imagination and be part of who they are and the gifts that they're leaving in their wake. These kids are fun to be around and it's a lifelong skill that should be nurtured in children. Don't encourage your children to think outside the box. Encourage them to think like there is no box and foster that creativity in your kids. Encourage them to think in new and unusual ways. Read books and watch movies about creative people like Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, JK Rowling, and Kid President. There are so many wonderful creative people in this world and when we expose our children to them, they see that being different, thinking in unusual ways, thinking differently is cool and encourage them to do that because we want imaginative and creative thinkers in our world because they're going to make a difference in ways that others aren't. My challenge to you is to teach your children to shoot for the stars and use their imagination to make this world a better place. It's kind of fun going into that imaginational world. Thank you for watching today. These kids are very special and we definitely need to wrap our arms around them and help to promote that extra special imagination that they have. In our next video, we are going to be discussing Dabrowski's intellectual overexcitability. These are the kids that always ask why. I've got one of my own. Hey mom, I have a question. Hey dad, why? constantly. They are so intellectually curious. And what can we do as parents to help make sure that that curiosity is supported and that they get the answers that they need? Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.